Hello, it's Thomas George, and today I'm going to show you how to mix vocals in Logic Pro 10. So of course it depends on what kind of vocals you've recorded. So if you're recording soft pop or heavy metal or rock or jazz, they're going to need to be mixed differently really. But this is kind of a soft pop um, vocal by a singer called Jessica Rose. And for now it's just her voice and a piano. To record the voice I used a Newman TML102 microphone and the piano I used a pair of omnidirectional Sherps. I'll just play you a bit of the track so you get a bit of a feel for what it actually sounds like dry. Sun rises here in the east So it grows on you before me I have actually mixed the piano beforehand. There was a really annoying squeaky foot pedal. If you have a look at one of my videos, I'll tell you how to remove a squeaky foot pedal. But the voice at the moment is completely dry. I'll just fast forward a bit so you can hear where it kicks in a bit more. So the way I actually record vocals in Logic Pro is I just record them over each other and then if I hit this arrow button here I can go through and make comps or make kind of a splice of different takes. I like to usually just find one good take and do that. But if there's any separate sections, say for example the singer goes slightly out of tune or they bang the microphone or anything like that, you can just go through and just splice it out. It's really easy, all you have to do is just drag on the grey take and this will allow you to splice. Whatever's blue is what you will hear. So yeah, go through and find any bits that maybe aren't quite right and hopefully if you've recorded enough takes and if the singer's any good, you'll find a part in another take where it is fine. So I won't bore you with me going through and finding each take, but that's normally what I'd start off with. So I'm going to do that now and I'll fast forward the video and then we'll have a comp to take. Okay, I've just gone through and made a few edits here. Generally, she's sung that pretty well, but there are a few parts where it was the pitching and the vibrato that could have been a bit better. So I just found other takes and spliced them in like so. It's really easy in Logic Pro 10 to do this. The next step isn't the most exciting, but I like to do it is I'm going to put down the volume in some of the breaths because soon I'm going to compress this which basically makes the quieter louder and the louder quieter so all the small mouth noises and <gasps> breaths are going to get a lot louder so I want to go through and just make them a bit quieter really just so the listener doesn't hear loads of <gasps> breath sounds it depends on the style of music I know in a lot of early Muse records there is some breath sound it does add a lot of character to the recording but in this kind of piano voice I don't want it too many breath sounds really so I'm just going to go through and automate down some of the breaths. I won't show you the whole thing of this because it can get a bit tedious but I'll just show you for example at the start. The sun rises here in the east so it will so just there, the breath, I'm just going to zoom in and we can just see the breath wave here. We can also hit this button, which will make the waves a bit bigger. This is quite handy for editing. Then all I'll do is just click, click two points like this, make sure that isn't above the wave and then just drag it down maybe about 8 dB. Just so the breath's a bit quieter. So when we do compress it, there won't be a really loud breath sound. Maybe even more, maybe 10. Let's try 12. East, so I still want to keep a small amount of breath so it's not too kind of electronic sounding, not too robotic. Because this is piano and a voice recording, I want it to sound like it was performed live, not like it was spliced and edited a lot, which to be fair, it could be in the end, but as long as you edit it well, people won't actually know. It's the same with a lot of classical music. When people hear a lot of classical music, they think, oh, it's, the whole orchestra has done this in one take, when really sometimes the, the performers have played that hundreds of times and the editor or the mixing engineer has gone through and spliced all those parts together. But as long as you do it well, you can get away with little tricks like this. So I'm going to go through now and just put down the volume of some of these breath sounds, just so it sounds a bit more pleasant to the listener and there's no loud 
breath sounds during this performance. Okay, I've just got to the end of taking out the breaths, which to be honest is quite boring. I don't take them out completely, I just lower the volume so when they compress the vocals there won't be loads of loud breath sounds. If anyone knows a quicker way of doing this, please write this in the comments section because I've spent many hours lowering the volume of breaths of singers, which isn't the best way to spend my time or the funnest, but sometimes it's got to be done if you want your recording to sound nice. Also, at the end, remember to trim, because a lot of the time people rustle around at the end of singing or they might bang their feet or even worse, they might talk back. So, uh, so here we can just lower the volume. So I'd say about here, just lower this down a bit, gradually put it down and then there we go, that is the end of the track. And if we zoom out, we'll see all the automations I've just done and uh, there's quite a few. Like I said, this doesn't need to be done, but it can improve your mix a fair bit, especially if you want to have quite an intimate song. We don't want loud <gasps> breaths in there because it might put off the listener. Um, like I said, if it's a more distorted rock sound, you can get away with having a breath sounds. But when it's a quite intimate song, I would try and lower them quite a bit. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a plugin called NS1. It's a noise suppressor by Waves. What it basically does is it gets rid of a lot of the background sound or the sound that isn't the vocals. So this might be low rumbling and even the sound of the room. Be careful if you're recording vocals though because sometimes you do want the sound of the room in the recording. It can add a rich element to your recording. But a little bit of NS1 I think can make a big difference. So let's just zoom in. I noticed this bit here, just marked it. If we just solo this. There's a rumbling sound there. And so this is without the NS1. If we put a bit of the NS1 on, we can also automate this for certain sections. We turn this on. You can hear already the rumbling is a lot quieter. I wouldn't have it too high because it can ruin the sound of the voice slightly. But just maybe say 10. And I normally like to have it on throughout. On me. So this is with the NS1. Naturally. And this is without. You can just hear the small rumbling sound without the NS1 if you listen. He went east and also some bleed from the headphones. And if I turn the NS1 on, he lifts me in the darkness. Gets rid of a lot of the headphone bleed and a lot of the low rumble sound. Okay, next what I'm going to do is add on a channel EQ. I'm just going to use the stock Logic one, because I think this one's pretty good. I like the analyzer feature it has. So if you're feeling a bit lazy, you can just look at the sound frequencies as well as hear them. So I like to just roll off a lot of the low end because he's not singing this low and it's just, a lot of it is just rumble. So about there, so about 25 or so, I just roll it off. Just go and find and I'll just take out a small amount of the high as well, just because she's not singing that high either. And yourself, babe. Now, a lot of EQing is just using your ears, really. You need to think of the mix, so what other instruments are doing, because you don't want the frequencies to clash too much. When it's a song like this, it's just piano and voice. You're quite free to EQ, really. You can basically do what you want. It's not really going to clash too much. B, you lost me. I'm going to take a bit of the high end down. It sounds a little too bright in places. It was a foul storm. There's still a lot more volume automation to be done in this track. For example, there was a big rumble sound we just heard there. I'd go through this track again after this and automate all the low rumble sounds out the best I can or you can even automate them out with the NS1. So you could add more NS1 in certain rumble sections and then lower the NS1 back to about 10 again after. 
Okay, now we're going to compress this. This basically just makes the loud quieter and the quiet louder. I like to use the stock logic one as well. Let's go in dynamics, compressor. And there isn't really a golden rule for this. You have to do it by ear. It depends on the song, it depends on the singer, it depends on the room, it depends on the preamp, it depends on the microphone. There's loads of stuff that can come into factor. So just go through and trial and error. I wouldn't even bother the presets. I just do it from scratch every time. I feel for trans. I like to have the limiter on as well, just so it doesn't clip and a negative 0 0.1. Dear. But just go through really and just see what sounds good. There's no rule for compressing or EQ. The light catch me as I fall. False dawn, what do you take me for? False dawn. Obviously you want to loop a bit where there's actually vocals because it's quite pointless just looping the, the headphone bleed. As the earth spins on its axis. For this kind of music, where it's very acoustic and natural sounding, I wouldn't really compress too much because you can get rid of a lot of the dynamics and the organicness of the song. So I just compress it a small amount. As the earth spins on its axis, I'm like that cold weather. You don't miss. I'm right here. So put it right here. I've got the threshold minus 24.5, the ratio 5 to 4 to 1, and negative 1 makeup gain. But I will go through after this and spend a lot more time compressing. But this is just quickly showing you uh, the stages I use to mix vocals. One thing I'd probably do before the compressor actually is I'll add on a de -esser. So this will get rid of the harsh tss -tss S sounds, which is coming through quite strong on this microphone, really. I like to use the one by Waves. It's just called de -esser. It's really simple. You just lower the threshold pretty much. And this will get rid of a lot of the harsh S sounds. As the earth spins. You hear that spins there, it's really harsh S. It's not very nice to listen to. So let's just isolate this. Spins on its spins on its spins on. So we just lower the threshold. Spins on its spins on its. Don't lower it too much or it will make the recording sound a bit strange. Spins on its spins on its spins on its spins on it. I'll probably have it about there. About 30. Spins on its spin. Okay, let's just zoom out. And another thing I like to do is to add on a doubler. For this kind of music, I just add on a small amount. This just creates a wider stereo image for your vocals. Okay, so this is the doubler two by Waves. I believe there's a doubler four as well. But for this style of music, I'd only just put a small amount on. You can go through the presets on this. There's some cool presets. There's some strange names on the presets. But let's try Soulmates. Let's let's have a look. On its axis. Which sounds awful. <laughs> This is why a lot of the time I like to actually just go in from scratch and do it myself. You learn about sound design and synthesis doing this and also some of the presets are pretty bad in my opinion. So I go on preset zero, double up full reset. The way I like to do it is to move this red over slightly. I'm not too sure if this is the proper way but this is the way I've always done it through trial and error. And the purple to the left and then just move the red to the right and the purple over slightly. And play it back. I'm like that cold weather. It's all to make it wider, move this across. Miss, I'm right here. There's way too much doubler on that. So what I'm going to do is send it to an auxiliary, bus one. Then stick this on bus one. Then I can just send a small amount rather than the whole thing. Where well, I've always been. So this controls the amount that gets sent to bus one, which has the doubler. In on that search for peace, it was a fire. So I'd probably have it about there. Oh, I feel for. 
then go back to the mix. Don't just have this soloed the whole time while you're mixing. It is about what it sounds like in the whole song. So let's have a listen to this with the piano. Then what I'll do is I'd add on another bus, say bus two, then I'll put on some reverb. It depends on the style of music, but for this one, I'll probably have it quite reverberated. So let's go down to reverb. And I like the Space Designer. I think Space Designer is great by Logic. And as this is an auxiliary bus, you want to make sure the dry is all the way down. What do you take me for? Catch me as I fall, fall stone. What do you take me for? Fall stone. There's still a lot of rustling sounds in this, so I'd probably go through again and re automate. But you want to do this in a way where the listener can't hear that you've edited it. You want to make it sound like it's all live. And it's just a live performance that we happen to just hit record on the on our recording device. But really we've gone through and we've chopped it up and edited and moved it around and changed all the EQs and the frequencies and the sounds. But the listener is meant to be tricked to believe this is a nice live recording and the singer and the performer are just perfect when in reality it's not always the case. So this is basically just a quick overview of how I would mix a vocal like this. I'm just going to turn off the plugins now. So this is dry. And this is with the plugins. So this is just a quick overview of what I would do. I would also go through and automate the NS1. To do this, just hit the drop down box here, go to NS1, and then you can go through and automate the amount of the NS1 also. So for example, here, there's quite a low rumbly sound. I could add up the NS1, so it will get rid of that rumbly sound, hopefully. I find this more effective than automating out the volume sometimes because it can be more subtle than just doing this. Same with the deesser, same with the compressor. Go through and automate it throughout the whole song rather than just sticking it on. But this is basically how I would mix a vocal like this. I would use a noise suppressor to get rid of some of the headphone bleed and the rumbly sound. I would use EQ to obviously EQ this. If it's a larger sound of more instruments, I would EQ depending on the other instruments because you don't want too many frequencies to clash. Then I would use the de to get rid of that tss -tss, the harsh S sounds. That would compress it to make basically the loud quieter and the quieter louder. Then I'll just automate the heck out of it. I'll try to get rid of a lot of the loud sounds, the loud rumbles, um, by automating mainly the volume and the NS1. And that's basically it but the main thing is to train your ear to go through because sometimes yeah for different styles of music it can be completely different don't rely on presets if anything don't use any presets and just do it all from scratch and yeah that's how i would start off mixing a vocal so thank you for watching this video i hope you found it useful if you'd like to learn more from me remember to check out the description below i've got a course on logic pro 10 where i'll basically show you how to go from beginner to advanced in a really easy to follow format, similar to this, but with a bit more structure. So thank you for watching this video. Remember to like and subscribe if you find it useful, and I'll catch you next time.